Thank you, Wendy. I appreciate it. And welcome, everybody. Uh, welcome to my session today. Um, what I uh, see as you all are logging in um, is we have the chat window and the Q&A window open. And I'm trying, my chat window keeps going away. So I'm trying to make it bigger so I can actually see the chats that come in. Um, I'm going to, what I'm going to ask is I'd like you to participate and if you uh, could chat in, I'm going to ask some questions, go ahead and chat it in. If you've got a question like to ask during question and answer, then uh, put that in the Q&A box. Uh, the chat box is, you just click on that in the bottom right corner and you can open up the chat box. So, however, if it keeps getting shrunk, I can't read the chat box. Um, I'm not sure, Wendy, if you're adjusting that or somebody else. No, if you can minimize the um, participants so you don't see the participants and then also minimize the Q&A, then that should give you the best view of the chat. Okay, yeah, those are all minimized. It keeps going away, but I will try to monitor the, um, thank you for that, Wendy. Um, I'll try to monitor the, the boxes here so that I can see the chats coming in, um, but I do have participants minimized. Okay, excellent. Well, welcome everybody. And as Wendy said, we're going to talk about the six tips for successful teleworking. And um, I'll just say that the the core of this presentation was created prior to COVID. And it was based on inputs from those who actually work full time and at home regularly, whose, whose job it is it makes them telework. So I wanted to compile best practices and how do they survive? What makes it what makes it work for them? But now with COVID, of course, many more of us are working from home. And so this session is going to talk about the nuances of teleworking maybe in more normal times, whatever normal may be, um, when we're actually teleworking and we have office mates who are not, as well as now during COVID, how do we survive and make teleworking work for us? So this discussion is going to include new trends in teleworking since the pandemic. Oops, okay, um, there we go. So we'll start off with a with a poll. And if you would, go ahead and uh, chat in the poll um, the, the answer. If you think back to fall of 2019, pre-COVID times, when it comes, what comes to mind when you think of a teleworker? Or sorry, first we're gonna open with a poll. What is your preference when social restrictions ease up what what is your preference? Go ahead and chat in or in the chat or the Q and A. A B C D or E. What what is your preference? Thank you. I see the answers coming in. Okay. So so most of you are are you prefer the half and half, right? You want to work some days at home, some days in the office. Flexibility is good. Yeah, trending toward A. Yeah, you're trending toward A, I like that. Um, so that works too. And some people, you know, when we first started teleworking, people were like, whoa, this is a vacation, man. And and you very quickly learn after that, it's like, you know, it isn't paradise. Um, this is not a vacation and it, it isn't working out as well as what you thought. And so this talk is designed to give you some ideas on ways to make it work better for you. And we'll see if maybe some of your ideas on where you stand right now, what your preferences are, if we can make it better if you need to survive while teleworking. So, okay, now going back to pre-COVID, if you think back to fall of 2019, what comes to mind when you think of a teleworker? What would come to mind when you are, um, when you're thinking of a teleworker? Okay, yeah, thank you, Jeff. So you can get more, more work done at home, yeah? So when you're thinking of a teleworker, are you thinking they're working hard? Are you thinking, well, maybe they're hardly working? Are they dedicated? Are they off, wandering off? Are they focused? That looks like goofing off. Yeah, this picture is what comes to mind when a lot of people think of teleworking. They're like, I'm sitting on the couch with my mug of hot chocolate and my fuzzy bunny slippers, just, you know, watching TV and whiling the day away or reading a good book, right? So, okay, so so there, yeah, so you could, um, and it's hard to take a broad brush to that. It's not true for everybody, but we all have our perceptions as to what 
what comes to mind when you're thinking of someone who is teleworking? Some people think, well, they have it easy. You know, they have all the flexibility in the world and they have it super easy. It's not like being in the office. You know, they have no idea. Well, both are difficult, right? And they both have their challenges. Now the question is, how have your perceptions changed since one, since 2019, you know, since one year ago or 2019? Yes, you're right, Karen. Some people are more disciplined than others when they're working from home. Um, dedicated people at the office will probably be dedicated teleworking. Reverse is also true, probably more so. Bill, that's an excellent point. You are right about that. Um, when you are teleworking, whatever your habits were before are going to be magnified. Your management and interpersonal skills will be magnified. And so, you know, we, we definitely need to learn how, how to work better from a home environment. But I'll say personally, you know, in an office, I was a very effective, I was, I was a good manager. I mean, I made an effort to, to manage my teams well and to work well with them. And when I first started working remotely, I learned that, you know, the skills I used in the office, did not transfer 100%. They were not, you know, it, I couldn't just do the same things I used to do. And um, and so we're gonna, you know, some of the resources I'm gonna provide here are going to address that. Uh, what, wherever our weaknesses are, we need to beef them up. Whatever were our strengths, we may need to change slightly the way we work to make it work, to make it happen better. So you're right. Um, good distinction between being a leader and a worker. Yeah, and one person socially isolated. Yeah, Keith. A lot of people, it's like, I could never telework. I need people around me. Uh, we'll talk about that. All right, excellent. So, so let's, uh, let's, and what we're going to talk about here are, we're going to quickly just discuss the common misperceptions, but we're going to really spend most of our time on ways to work more effectively from home and maybe even more happily from home. Uh, so we'll talk about that because fact is memories are short. And once everyone goes back to work or once things are back to a new normal, some of these perceptions are going to come back. Now, you'll see here that we have a handout. Um, you are welcome to download this handout. And the handout will, will include a one-page handout of what I'm presenting today. So it'll summarize the key points from today. And it's a great one if you want to take notes on it as well. It also includes um, an ebook, the Art of Teleworking ebook, which not only contains some of the information from today, but also managing virtual team members, resolving conflicts when on a remote team, uh, and talking about other things like that. There's also two other resources that are not mine. I got them from other sources. Um, there's a, a blog or an article on the six things the most productive people do every day, and it's based on neuroscience. Uh, Eric Barker writes a fascinating newsletter, and, and I love it, and this is a good article from him, uh, updated for the pandemic in teleworking during the pandemic, and then Microsoft, um, an article of the trends that they have found during COVID and the teleworking differences that we've seen there. So if you want to go download that, those hands. Hi there, I hope you enjoyed that last clip. My name is Michael Maloudis, and if you'd like to watch the full 60 minutes of that last webcast, while also gaining complete unlimited access to our entire library of IT learning, simply visit our subscribe page at greatpro.org slash subscribe. Unlimited annual access is $199 per year, but if you use the coupon code learn to earn you can drop that membership fee to just $149. That's less than $13 per month for unlimited access to over 1,000 hours of on-demand career development, covering the entire spectrum of IT management best practices, including business analysis and requirements, software development, quality and testing, risk management, process improvement, project management, and even digital transformation. But your membership doesn't just give you unlimited access to our vast learning library. You also get free access to our mobile app, as well as direct access to our network of over 300 of the world's leading IT consultants, all of whom are dedicated to putting practical knowledge at your fingertips so that you can learn more and earn more. I hope you will join me in becoming a member of The Great IT Professional and advancing your career with us. And if you're on YouTube, don't forget to hit that subscribe button above so that you get notified whenever we publish new free webcasts each week of the year. Thank you for your time and best wishes for your continued success.